Hi folks, uh, here we are. I've got a fantastic guest here today and it is Charlie Breaker all the way from Spain. How are you, Charlie? Fucking lovely, mate. We've got about 25 degrees today. Ain't quite warm enough to swim in port to jump in yet, but yeah, I'm having it. I'm having it, mate. I, I, I love it over it. I love it over it. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, oh, God, can't you say? Can't you say? I, no, I can say, because I'm just outside out of Kenty. Yes. I've got, I've, I've got a nice little uh, place here. I've got a nice garden with animals and swimming pool and hot tub and bars and all kinds of things going on there, about 30 fucking tortoises and dogs and fucking pigeons. You know this one. Charlie, we are what? here today because of the book, the Nuff Said book, Tales of a South London Villain, A Whirlwind of Crime, Violence and Sex, Fueled by Drugs, Booze and Rock and Roll. So it sounds a lot of fun, Charlie. Was it fun? My life's been a load of fucking fun. It's yeah. been a fucking very load of fun. And all the things are actually 100% correct because yes, 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 and yes, and yes. It was me all the way through my life. That's all I wanted you to do. Yes. It's fucking fun. I want to go out and loads of money and have loads of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that involves everything what you've just read out. Yes. Um, so it's 100% right. I'll Shall we go back to the, the, the beginning? Well, did, did, you, did you start off with a, a life of crime or did you gradually get into it how did it kind of kick off well the second the, the first book i wrote which you now be out in the second book out right yeah it's called uh, uh uh the the life in a day of a brixton boy not the day in the life mm -hmm. so life in a day a brixton boy uh brings up them early years first 20 years of my life and basically i was born the year after the war ended or the year, or the year after the soldiers come back and and, and it was a baby boom Yes. We're in a fucking area that's like totally fucking bombed. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to live everything two up and two down. We've got about 20 fucking people in it because we're nowhere else to live. There was no money, no factory, nothing, right? Yes. So the men took to the streets and took to crime. Mm -hmm. Because there was fuck all to do, right? Oh, us sons, we took. But we wanted a slightly better life than what they had, right? You know what I mean? So that, that, I would do a bit of fucking nicking a bit of lead of bruise and all this other kind of shit, you know? My, my, my uncles were like the totters and all that, you know what I mean? Hard generation wanted something different. Mm -hmm. And from that grew the Brinks Matt, right? The first were a great train robbers. I mean, they were like, when I was very young, a teenager, I'd just come out of kids' home, I think at times, something like that. Uh, and, and, and they were in a local pub planning it, right? You know what I mean? I was sat in the garden with the boys, but yes. no people, half the people was in there we knew anyway. Because he was a Brixton boy and all that, you know? It says on, on when I was looking at some of the notes on it, it said that you you were on the run quite a lot. Was was that right? I was on the run quite a lot. When, when I was in a pro school up in uh, Suffolk, right? Um, I, I, I had this fucking Barney you know, and, and I fucking left this case off for fucking dead. And I ended up a dirt runner, right? But I've done a runner and I've ended up a mate of mine who was a Geordie guy. Uh, I'd recently left and he said, I'll come up to Newcastle if you ever get there. He's always come live with us. Well, I, I thought Newcastle was a fucking village, but I was like, I was like, I never find him. But we had a load of ventures on the way there, right? Which are all in the, the other book that had come out. And when I got there, I finally got nicked in the fucking uh, robbing a chemist in Big Market in Newcastle. And I got arrested and taken down the train to fucking uh, down. I was in court up there, put me down the train, bung me in the scrubs. Yes. That's where I'd done the bread and water and one thing and other. I beat up a screw, a few screws there. Ended up getting the ball stall. Went to fucking ball stall. Uh, what was it like, um, just to bring you back, what, what was it like being banged up or being in Borstal, how did you take to that? What, what was the life like? Well, I think I think from being in home when I was 10 years old, that, that, yeah, that makes life normal, right? So then you then you move into a Peru school, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. And you go to Borstal, what's the difference? You know what I mean? You even meet the same people, yeah. you know what I mean? In place because that, that's like you going to Cambridge or Eton and all them, fucking, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that yeah, that was my education. So by the time I come out of Bolsa, I decided I didn't want to be a criminal anymore, right? I wanted to be a straight runner and get a go get myself a nice little truck and go tot in, right? Yes. So uh, I went and worked for about three or four months on a pig farm and I had enough money to get a little truck, done it all up, drove back into London with it. It was an Essex where I was working, just outside Chelmsford. And anyway, um I, I, I come back with a bit of money, now I'm gonna be a tot, right? Fine. Yes. I'm at tot in. Who's got the local scrapyard? Charlie Richardson. Oh, really? 
Right. He was Allah. He was Allah Kuyad. Yeah. So next year, I know I've gone in there one day, and I'm, I mean, I've had a proper tear up in the pub now. Because right? when I come out of ball school, I was a tough. You know what I mean? Yes. I was a big, tough 18 and a half year old fucking boy, right? Mm-hmm. But I've gone in there, of course, gossip's got around Brixton. Uh, and um, and he said, I've heard your line on Blair to nobody, mate. My boy, I said, yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, perhaps so, Mr. Richardson, sir. You know? He said, sit down. I said, I can stand up. He said, sit down. I've got a little proposition, right? And he wanted me to start doing his runs, his, uh, uh, being his delivery boy, right? Right. The whole story of it is in the other book, right? Yes. And it, it turned out he got he, he got fucking arrested and I had to go on a truck because they were pulling in all the people that had done a bit with him. Mm-hmm. And they were, but they were offering him a five stretch or fucking or or, or, or some information. Mm-hmm. I got this was coming, right? So the night he was bought, he was fucking arrested. The day he was arrested, that night I spent my uncle's stable. Right. And then I went down to a, a down to the train station in the morning and there was a train there, choo choo. I'm just talking 60s, right? Two to a train on the fucking station. I went up to a uh, ticket office. I said, uh, see that train there? She said, I said, can I, can I please, I want, want to go to the end of the line. Mm-hmm. He said, where are you going? I said, to the end of the line. I didn't know it was where it was. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, let's go to Penzance. I said, that's where I want to go. I want to go to Penzance, right? Yeah. And I bought a one-way ticket at Penzance. Yeah. Well, what were but, the Richardsons like? What were they like? Were they, were they all that they were cracked up to be? Eddie was away for most of the time, you know what I mean? So I never really ended up doing any. Charlie was a man to be respected and obeyed, and he was the daddy. Although later we have got older, we just come and be good friends together. You've seen us together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we used to talk a lot about things, you know. But I mean, him and Eddie yeah, didn't get on. So, uh, and Eddie was doing a stretch by the time I got involved and that kind of thing. So, um, oh, I remember the two of them and, and you down in um, Caesars in Stratham. There was one night where they were both in the same bar oh, in Caesars. Right. Tell me remember about that? It. Tell me about it. You see the same picture, you see him whispering in my ear, going, that fucking wrong, it's over there. It's a lovely photo of yeah. me and him. And I'm sort of smiling, really, but he's like growling. His teeth are all coats and their bastards and the fuck they're running, they're running, they're running, they're running. Of course, they both called each other ruggers. Yeah. I don't. It's not up to me to discuss the story because that's not my story, right? But yeah, they they, they both see each other that way. Um, Eddie's still around, bless his cotton socks. Yeah, he's still uh, going, isn't he? I n- I never really knew Eddie. Probably no. I did know Charlie very well. Yeah. Um, and uh, but for a very short period, so I've ended up in a shop in Cornwall. So yeah. no, I'm going straight this time. I'm going straight. I ain't going to be a fucking villain no more. I ain't going to be a crook no more. I'm going to be a straight living. Yeah. I'm going to work on a fucking fishing boat, right? What the fishy boats do at autumn? They look, they bang up. They bang up for the winter. They, they what do you call heave argo, ha, ha, anchor, and they stay up with and all go all go down the door office and turn on. Yeah. I can go turn on. I don't want my name going up anywhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what do I do? Revert back to crime. And there you go. Well, what what were the type of things that you were doing in crime? I mean, without in you know, incriminating anybody or uh, yourself or anything. Read the book. Yeah, yeah, which you could get on Amazon. I was a very varied person. We've yeah. done everything, robberies and blags, uh, uh, all kinds of things. I used to fence a load of gear. I had to slaughter if you read it in the book and that. Yeah. Um, I'd be buying and selling anything, really. I didn't give a yeah. fuck what it was, right? Yeah. We'd be involved in drugs, be involved in stolen goods, involved in anything, really. You know what I mean, yeah? And then later on, I got, well, not so much, so much later on, I started getting involved in the Jamaican export. Yeah, that was interesting that, that you, you yeah. got, got down here that you were the main, the one white guy doing the whole community down in Brixton. Well, was that right? Right. What happened, right? Joe, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I worked out the hierarchy afterwards. Joe was getting from Mr. Nice, right? Yeah. From Howard, who's recovered like a life from a friend of mine, but I didn't know him then. Yeah. Joe was, he was, he was supplying Joe. Joe was supplying I was calling him Uncle, Uncle Jim, right? Rather than you know, anybody say it. And uh, Uncle Jim uh, uh, supplied me, right? Right. Coming in, tons of it. I mean, like, band loads and uh, it went through silly amounts. But what happened was the Jamaican community was relying upon little bits coming in from Jamaica. Yes. That weren't enough. Mm-hmm. And the Jamaican community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and breeding like fuck. And every Jamaican whole area comes to fucking Brixton to score. And then every white man comes to Brixton to score. And Brixton is just one big selling haven, right? Yes. 
I don't know if it still is. It weren't far off it when I left there, so but it weren't smoked so the puff then. Uh, so I, start, I started off to send some of a bit of a bit of hash what I was doing initially, uh, and then and then they said, "Would well, you get any weed?" So I started getting weed before the wife and I left. And I ended up with a whole troop of people there working for me. Their front, I'd 13, 14 guys working in the front line. Right. And I go every morning, but just before lunch, that's morning for them. And, and go down and give them all their day's supplies, saying roughly how much they sell, taking the money from the day before, right? Yeah. And then they would go to work again. Mm-hmm. And they, all they give us come from me. They're all competing with each other. It's yeah. all coming from, right. all coming from you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had quite a few other guys that are now supplying other areas like Bourbon and all that. And I'd drop off to their place, they would go and deliver to Birmingham or wherever it was going to. Um, so really, I become Mr. B. And now, how if you did look, they accept you into the community? Were they, were they quite happy? I was I born in it? Yeah. yeah. When I was a little kid, when I was a little kid, at one stage, I was the only white family in the street. Right. Right. And I'm a little kid running around the streets, three or four years old or whatever, mm-hmm. with the little black kids. Yeah. Then my life from friends, the ones that are still alive are still my life from friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody knows me. If you're, you're in my position, they call you original. I'm originally you not. Know, yeah. right? That means I was born there. I'm part of the community. I'm part of them. Yes. Original. Right? So to be c- come from Brixton, right, uh, and, and live and be born up there and be with them from when they were kids, mm-hmm. is the one word for it. That's original. And I was original. So... I don't know why. I always did walk to any club. I am in my own club, you know, my own black man's club, you know. So yeah. did you did you go to a club? I should call it really. Sorry, I didn't mean to be just, did you did you home. go to Jamaica, Charlie, and, and have to work oh, out yeah. there as well? Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to have to go out there and walk to I had a number of shops out there working for me, about half a dozen franchises. Mm-hmm. I say working for me. I was sending over stuff for them and they was putting it in their shops and they were selling it and I was going around collecting the money. Right. What a life, man. What a life. How fantastic. What, I mean, how, I how like, long did that go on for? How long did that whole scenario uh, go until, on? Until the uh, pound got too strong. Yes. You might have got too weak. And the Japanese yen hit the floor. So they started having Japanese instead of British. Up until they had all British cars. Fantastic. Because right? obviously yeah. it was owned by England mm-hmm. or Britain, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And for independence. So all them cars. And I mean, the cars are too expensive to buy a new. You never bought a new car in Jamaica. You, you repaired the old one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And see, cars have been repaired so many times, you can't even know what make they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked up. Because that, as, if people, have, people have never been really well off in Jamaica at anyway, any time. But uh, I think it's few cars are probably a little bit better now than they was. So mm-hmm. you know, it's the first thing when a Jamaican comes fresh out yard, man. Mm-hmm. The first thing they want is a car. Yes. Because yeah. they couldn't afford a car back in England. So they get involved in a bit of crime over it and they buy a BMW, Black Man's Wheels, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. And Bob Marley in the wireless, which you and, and like uh, and then they got have a gun. Yeah. And once they got gun the car, they go get a white bird and that's it. That's yeah. How a yardy starts off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this where, did you, where did you go, go on to from, from there? Where if, if if it started to decrease, uh, where how did you branch out? Where did you go? Well, uh, my best friend in the early years was the Gypsy champion, a uh, guy called Mark Ripley. Yes. And uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, whatever, we, we were like two blood brothers. We were two blood brothers. We'd done everything ever. And uh, me and Mark got into some different things, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. Uh, Robbery's and that sort of thing, And we'd done very well for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then, um, an, Sorry to interrupt, Charlie. Is, is there an adrenaline... Oh. Um, rush when you're doing that sort of stuff. Is there a buzz oh, to right. it? Oh, right. Uh, without mentioning any names, right, I can give you a fair example. A guy I know very well, right, he has so much money cutting up brand new lorries and sending the engines about abroad. He end up buying a bloody great farm down in Kent, no, sorry, sorry, yes. and for his mother to move to, right? His mother moved there. Right? He was driving around in Rolls Royce, blah, blah, blah. You know, but when they got a new lorry, like a brand new Mercedes or something to cut up, Yes. He would have to be on the cutting gun because that was oh, wow. I'm on a cutting gun, right? And pe- his workers sitting there watching him while he's working because yes. he's the buzz of cutting that a brand new lorry up. Oh. The cutting his yeah. buzz, right? We all had our buzzes. We've got buzzes off different things. I still got buzzes now, you know, yeah. uh, off of various things where I don't commit a lot of crime anymore. No. Um, but well for that, 
one of one of the notes I've, I've I've got down here as well is I was speaking to Norman Buckland. Um, did did you did you have a lot of fights? Were you like an unlicensed fighter as well? Did you? Do... I I I I done a fair amount of um, really just off the spur of the moment unorganized stuff, right? Yes. And I end up with a little bit of organized stuff, and I got me 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 skull broke, and I had to stop. Then I couldn't do it anymore. I simulate all these and I've got a whole um, cracked skull. So if you've got an egg and you put a crack in an egg, it's weak as fuck, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, and my skull is weak as fuck. And they said, you get another crack in your egg, you'll probably die. So so that all had to stop there. But me and, me and Norman used to fuck around a bit, you know, have a bit of sparring in one thing and another. Yes. I was a bit bigger than Norman, really. I know he looks a big guy, but I was bigger than him in them days, he would tell you that. I'm a bit taller and a bit broader in one thing and another. And we've become good friends, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, we, you know, we, you know, we fucked about a bit. Uh, we was from two different schools and from different, he was from Rousey, I'm sat under right? Mm-hmm. Not that like, meant an awful lot, but we were like in different, different fields, different classes. He was a doorman, you know what I mean? Yes. I, I, I employed doorman, you know what I mean? So, yes. I, I, and I, I was doing a bit of unlicensed. He wasn't really, he was just banging people out in the street and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And then later, when he started to get more involved, I'd done a bit sparring with him, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. And, and now he's become the governor. He is. Who's the governor? Oh, ah! yeah. <laughs> I love Norman. Norman's a lovely guy. He he come down to see me once. Yeah. I've done embarrass him telling the story. He come down to see me once and he got fucking lost trying to find his way. Yeah. And he was driving from somewhere up up past up past Alec Kenny somewhere. Yeah. And uh he finally said, oh, I keep driving around circles like, trying to fucking find your gap, right? So where he said, Well, I'm on a motor one. So what's it called? He says, I'll have a look at him. Oh, he says AP7. I said, fine. Now, when you come to the next turning, tell me what it says. Mm-hmm. And then I will tell you how far away you are right. and how many more turns you need to go to, right? Because yeah. I know the motorway very well, right? And he goes, oh, he says, I've just come across. It's a turning to go to Salida. The Salida means exit. I can kill myself for laughing because oh, yeah. he's... <laughs> Oh, it's he's so funny. funny, man. He's a funny man. Uh, I, I love it, Pete. And he came here with us. I think it's pictures of us together. He's probably got some. I've probably got some of us together here. Yeah. And we had a great time together while he was he's here. He's a nice bloke, isn't he? He's a good uh, man. I love uh, him. He's a lovely guy. He used to come down and booze on that all the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, you, you had that fantastic pub down in uh, South London, didn't you? Which. Uh, I, 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 I filmed a few do's that you had down there with, you know, the Yes, the one you talk about, that's a park tavern, right? Yes. Yeah, the park tavern, yeah. A very, very popular pub, very, very popular pub. Yeah. Uh, very pretty little pub. I turned it into being a pretty little pub. It was a fucking rough house. Yes. I went up, but it was all boarded up and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, because I was known on the patch. Yes. You see, I built a bit of respect on that patch, right? right. That's why I got my bread really on that patch more so than downtown. Yes. So, uh, because uh, I, I, I I moved here in, in my twenties and that, and and um, if the youngsters didn't know me, their father or their grandfather did. Yes, yes. Right. So I've gone in there with a ready-made name. Yes. And this is a pub that no can't control. Mm-hmm. Right. They put a public in there, public get beaten up and thrown out the door, and they sit there and drink all his beer and nick his money. Nothing you can do about it, right? Yes. And I mean, yeah, call the police on it because they're going to get smashed up again. And you know what I mean? And that's yeah. the way it was going. And the brewery weren't getting no money, uh, no rent. And yes. It all went wonky. So they boarded it up. And I said, it's a very troubled pub. Blah, blah, blah. So I was moving from another pub. Mm-hmm. I sold them the the uh, the 15 year growth lease I had from them. That was a troubled pub. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't as bad as this one. Uh, and I turned that round. And we never had a call out from a cops in the whole three years I was there. Um, and then they offered me a nice sum to be able to, to turn it into a block of flats. But I had a 15 year growth lease, they had to buy it off. I'm just waiting, I'm looking for somewhere to go. Yeah. So they said, Well, you'd be interested in a troubled pub. I said, Yeah, I said, here's our trouble with some list, right? Yes. Have a look on anything you fancy. I said, Yeah, I have a fucking park tavern. We're sort. Yeah, that's yeah. my manner. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's where the big yards and my brackets yards, I think, up there, you know. So mm-hmm. I moved down there and they were all swamped in there. And it was lovely. I mean, we had, we had to have rules, uh, but our, our rules were not the kind of rules that most pubs tried to have. I thought it was a lot more lucrative to the young people. Um, yes. You know what I mean? I could tell you if you want what the rules were. Do you want to know? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. 
right. Uh, okay. Well, we used to say, right, the, the garden had been unlicensed, right? Mm-hmm. Because the people before kept throwing fucking beer bottles over the fence. Right. And uh, the people were out at the house there having a right hunt with it. They're trying to shut the pub down. They managed to get a license for a garden D license. Yes. And now we're working on getting the pub shut down. So because I was next to a troubled pub, I bought the house anyway. So thank you. I've got that cheap trouble it later on. I said, now, see, in Lammas in them days, in your private property, in your private garden, in your private house, you could smoke. Yes. I've never smoked my own, but you could, right? And uh, so um, I, I decided that I was going to allow them to be Ganja Gardens, right? Oh, really? <laughs> and they were my private gardens, they were now Ganja Gardens because it wasn't part of the license premises, right? So yes. it didn't matter. Okay. So here we go G Ganja Gardens, right? Yeah. Okay. Nowhere else. Yeah. G Gardens. But you do not go past beer bar on the way. Right. Because bar beer is essential. Will you have a drink when you go into tea bar? Yes. So that's, they got it. Well, that's fine. And uh, then it was, there's no one in voice. I said, you're like a lion, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I've had the windowsill cleaned up with all the fucking cement the last person put in there, yes. right? I put a nice clean tile in there. So you don't use the toilet seat. Yes. Look yourself in the cubicle, right? Have yourself whatever you want. On the way out, I put a mirror on the wall. So you can see if there's any evidence on your face as you walk yes, out, right? That's yeah. clever. That's where you get nowhere else, right? So see Charlie Cocaine, right? Yes. See Charlie Kazi Cocaine, right? Right. Because uh, we call it Charlie, that we Yes. Uh, uh, and, and so what? I think there's two more rules. The other rule was um, hoodies. Yes. Right? Hoodies can come in, but take your hood down before you walk in. Yes, that's good. If you leave it up, I'm going to embarrass you. Because yes. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to put it down in front of your friends and they're all going to laugh at you and call you yes. down, right? Okay. Yes. So don't do that, right? Let Just put it down as you walk in through the door, right? And the last and very most important rule always, you can fight whoever you want in my cup mm-hmm. once you've beaten me. Yes. Of course, that's, never Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And that, that was the rules. We're up the road, a nice, lovely, a lovely black guy, smoking guy, Xbox that took over a pub and he said, right, no drugs, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. empty pub. Yeah, I had a full pub. I bet you did. Pub I come down. <laughs> so you had all of these fantastic nights there because you had the uh, the early shavers night. I was there. You had a couple of uh, Ronnie Biggs nights, and then I think you had some Tony Lambriano fundraising nights. So fantastic nights down there. Well, the thing is that w- when there was anything going on within the firm, right? Yeah. And what you remember, see this thing? What you got firm, firm, everybody calls them firm. Hey, fucking firm, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. The firm. I was the youngest allowed member of the firm, really, yeah. right? Uh, and nobody younger than me was really allowed in. But yes. I, I'd done a couple of things, one thing in particular, which I won't go into now. No. Uh, and, that, and that pulled me into the firm, right? Okay? Yes. I'd, I'd done a bit for somebody else, and everybody went to me after that. Really loved me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and um, so this firm thing, right, really was run by Joe. Yes. And Joe done what he wanted with that. I was, I was a good friend of mine. And and, and so I, I used to run around doing it and she to help Joe out. And Joe doesn't need to get to help me out. So on and so forth, as we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, any firm things at all, right? Tony Lambriano, yes. right? He dies. So we're going to try to raise some money for Wendy. Yes. If he's fuck all since he come out of prison, right? Yes. We've got Ronnie Biggs. He's got fuck all since he come back from Brazil. Yes. Because he's English, he can't get legal aid. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I'm not a bigot, right? Racist, right? Yeah. But the law says if you are not English, you can get legal aid. But if you are English returning after six months, six months, you can't get legal aid. I can't yeah. get legal aid. No. Right? So, so, and, and, you, and, and the thing is, you can't go to court, appeal court, without legal aid, without a solicitor. Yes. You can't get legal aid because you've got to pay for a solicitor. Yeah. So it's catch 22. You won't get an appeal coming through. Mm-hmm. So we decided, right, sat down between us and worked it out with Roddy Biggs. Yeah. We'd raise some. Keep, to keep paying for his sister, yes. and we kept raising money for his sister, uh, and therefore he could appeal. Yes. So you had and top that, people, top people there on the night, the top the sort of uh, villains you might the, say. All the top people would always be there. I mean, uh, uh, I guarantee Charlie would be there nine out of ten times. Joe would be there ten out of ten times. Yes. Roy would be there ten out of ten times. Jimmy Nash, Johnny Nash used to come down quite a few times. Yes. 
uh, and a few other people as well, right? Yeah. Of course, that attracted an awful lot of people. Yes. And you used to get uh, like money on the door just so they could mingle with them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'd phone up everybody and go, right, just come down to the booth or whatever. If you want to think, just go to the bar and get one. No, it's not a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get to the bar and who was who. I said, but I don't think you're going to have to. Yes. But I think every fucker's going to buy you a beer, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and, and they're all been paying their tennis to Mickey on the door, right? Mickey yeah. Orlando. Hello, Mickey. Yeah. And Mickey Orlando on the door. He'd be taking all the tennis and then over to me. I'd be going to be on the jump, right? Yeah. In the yard, yeah. And, 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 and then they'd be up the bar. They'd go, oh, hello, Mr. Paul. You know, very nice to meet you and all that. Can I yeah. shake your hand? I've got a photograph with you. Can I have your autograph? Blah, 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 blah. Right. And this was packing the pub out with money. Yes. For our cause. Yes. For our cause. Because we, it was our cause. Yeah. But we were raising money for our cause uh, 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 by all these people who wanted to be part of it. Yes. And Absolutely. still do. Yeah. And still do. There's a lot of people out there who want to be part of our world. You know? Well, they're such charismatic people, those people, aren't they? I mean, they're amazing, you know, interesting characters. Well, you know what? I, I, I've got more than one said to me, right? And they come in the next day. Very often these people come in again, discuss the night before. Wow, we was there. I spoke yeah. to us. Yeah. I, I, and one of the top things they always said was, I can't believe I was in a pub with six of the most biggest dangerous gangsters in yes. fucking England. Yeah, yeah. They were all gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. My reply to that, they've got nothing to prove like you have. Yeah, absolutely. You're still trying to prove yourself. These guys proved themselves a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, they had their reputation. <laughs> I, 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 I proved myself a long time ago. People yeah. say, you're a gentleman. I can't believe where you come from, what you've done. Mm -hmm. I said, because I've got nothing to prove. Yeah. I've done it. I proved it. You know, 